Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Dragman44 here. You know, I tell you all the time, I get about halfway through with the project, or at least pretty good and started on it before I think about maybe doing a video or whatever. Um, then it dawned on me that it's probably not a bad idea to, to do a video um, on my little old neighbor lady's um, lawnmower. I don't even know what horse pirate is, and it's only about three years old. Um, I've already taken the front off of it and left it over at her house when I towed this home. I just picked it up with a tractor, but it's easier to pick up with the shroud off of it. Don't have to worry about that uh, tearing up that plastic shroud. But anyway, any um, I got it over here, and um, it's only about three years old, like I said, and I know it's going to be a fuel issue. Now, what I like to do, if I suspect that it's a fuel issue, and there's no reason to think it's anything but, is just go ahead and, and pull your cover off here and uh, just dust, just a slight dusting of carburetor cleaner or something like that in the inlet of the, uh, directly in the carburetor, and bump your starter. And if it fires like that, you know it's a fuel issue. And then, the second thing you want to look at is right underneath the carburetor on all these new ones, instead of a, a regular bolt, there's a funny looking little swelled up thing that kind of looks like a solenoid. And there's a reason for that, that's because it is a solenoid. And what that is, that's an anti-backfire solenoid. As soon as you turn the key on, that sends power to that solenoid, which then pulls the plunger down off of the main jet, which is going to allow the fuel to be sucked up into the cylinder through that main jet. And so whenever you turn it off, you know how so many times your engine will be coasting down and you'll hear it backfire, backfire, backfire. That's because the engine is so hot and the intake is still drawn or that, that vacuum is still drawn uh, fuel up that open uh, nozzle and it'll ignite on, com on heat or on temperature and compression because the engine's so hot, it doesn't have to have spark, those few uh, ignitions. What they've done is they've decided to put that little anti-backfire solenoid there so that when you turn the key off, it jams that little rubber thing right up against the main jet and stops fuel instantly and eliminates your backfire. But, that's things that are notorious with the fuel that we get nowadays. They're absolutely notorious for, uh, for getting stuck. So we're gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like and then pop that off and take a look at it. If you wonder why I don't have this on the overhead hoist, or the two post car lift, that's because it seems like every time I get ready to do something that I can use those fancy uh, lawnmower supports on that two post lift, there's another vehicle or something on it already. And uh, sure enough, I've got an F-150 over there on the rack right now, so I can't use it. Of course, you check your filter and everything, you know, for excessive dust and filth and everything. This is your carburetor bowl, of course. That's what's where your float is. And on the very bottom of this is that funny looking thing I was trying to describe. That's going to be your anti-backfire solenoid. And if you look, you can see that there's wires coming right to it. And those wires will be energized the instant you turn the key on and de-energized the instant you turn your key off. So what we have to do now is we have to remove these guys right here and whatever else is holding this uh, plastic in place so that we can either remove the bowl or remove this. Two 10 millimeter off the carburetor right here. And then a third one up here, which is a 5 16 or an 8 millimeter, should remove that plastic right here off of the front. Now we have to do what's necessary to get the carburetor off in order to get this guy out right here. Now usually when I pull the fuel line off, I have a pencil ready. That's last year's gas, boy, it stinks. That pencil usually takes care of it, but you get gas all over you no matter. Now we either have to figure out a way to spin this off or take your linkages off because it will not clear the frame of the... Now if there was a notch in the frame right here like it is right here, that would come right off of that. Here's the float bowl. There's uh, some debris and stuff in the bottom of the float bowl uh, kind of indicating that there's going to be a problem in the base of the carburetor. This is a solenoid I was telling you out that actually pokes right up through the bottom, the bottom of the bowl. When you apply 12 volts to this terminal, when you turn the key on, the solenoid will drop down. When it drops down, it opens that orifice or that nozzle to full fuel flow. And whenever you kill the power, the spring then pushes it right back up to the top and instantly plugs that orifice so it can't get that resultant uh, firing after you turn the key off. You have to be a little careful getting these off here because I don't want to bend any of these. Get those bent, uh, then you have a tough time getting everything adjusted again whenever you go back together. If you take a look right here, that's the effects of moisture that um, the 10% alcohol fuel is actually drawn into the carburetor. And this here is the main portion that that solenoid shuts off. And directly in line with it is this tiny orifice right here. That orifice right there is going to be plugged up. 
So I'm going to take this over to the air compressor. We're going to play, spray some cleaner in it, pull that orifice out. We have to clean all this debris out of here and reassemble it, and it should be good to go. Now, if you just want to make sure for yourself that the solenoid is actually functioning once you get it cleaned off, you can go ahead and plug the wires back onto it, and you can just turn your key to the very first position. See the solenoid, see the headlights come on, the solenoid pulls in, drops out, pulls in, drops out. When it drops out, it closes off that orifice. I guess I probably need to tell you, the space that you have to get in here is so thin, even a um, the thin tools in your toolbox, the thin wrenches won't get in there. So what you have to do is just take an old scrap wrench, this happens to be a half inch on most of these guys right here, and go to the bench grinder and grind it down to where it'll fit right in underneath there. You actually got to grind it down a lot on both sides in order for it to be able to reach in there. Assembly is just reverse order of disassembly. So uh, the most difficult for me is always the linkages because you have to make sure you get those in without doing any damage to it. And that'll go on the bottom. This actually threads up in here and that actually is the sort of bolt that actually holds the float bowl on the carburetor on these new ones. The only thing that keeps the bowl from leaking is tightening up the anti-backfire solenoid into the bottom of the carburetor, holding the bowl in place and compressing that gasket right there at the very top of the carburetor. So whenever you put it in and reattach your fuel line, make sure that you've got it snug enough where you don't see any leaks whatsoever coming out of the uh, carburetor bolt. Once you get to that point right there, you should be able to reassemble the whole thing. And of course these two nuts is what secure your uh, the, all the gaskets up against the uh, engine and also on the back of the filter here. So make sure you get those snug but not crazy tight. And your gas tank vent goes back on. And of course this vent here goes back on. Another, another reasonably simple fix. By what it was looking like inside the uh, the bowl of that carburetor, but it was still a result of having um, alcohol drawing moisture out of the atmosphere uh, and, and setting in this carburetor over the course of the winter. Uh, now you said he used sea foam in it, and I, I, I guess he probably did. At some particular point in time, he was using a lot of 10% of, uh, or more alcohol, and it drew that moisture, and that's what caused that internal uh, problem inside the carburetor. This time the little solenoid plunger, the anti-backfire solenoid, was not defective. Uh, so many times those things just gum up. Uh, and a lot of times that silly little rubber plunger will actually stick up there, you know, just because of the of the nasty gas. That's just the way I can put it. I don't have any other technical term to, uh, to tell you that. I'm going to go ahead and run this back to my neighbor lady. When I get back there, I'll go ahead and put the, uh, the cover on it, let you see what it looks like, you know, with all its clothes on. And this is Tractor Man 44, and I'm out of here, guys. I are wondering why I took the hood off, because I don't want to walk back and forth. So this is why I pick up and then go ahead and deliver the lawnmower and others. In Got a three-year-old, maybe a four-year-old Troy built, back together and ready to go. Just a little bit dirty, but at least the carburetor's clean.